Alrighty. So in this video, we're going to cover chapter two of the textbook, Hands-On Data Visualization. And we're going to go step by step in how to complete the Google Sheets practice exercises, All right? So this chapter is all about strengthening your spreadsheet skills. As you can see, you should be reading this this week. And there are also written instructions that go along with the Google Sheets practice exercises. They start around halfway through the chapter on this section called geocode addresses and continue all the way through to match columns with VLOOKUP. So you can go back and read or reread these chapters in order to understand some of the things that we're talking about. All right. You should have a copy of the Google Sheet Practice Exercises spreadsheet already in order to complete this assignment. And you should also have an extension installed called Geocoding by SmartMonkey. If you do not have this extension, go back to the textbook, read the Geocode Addresses chapter, and make sure that you have the extension installed before you begin. The first exercise is precisely about geocoding with this extension. And we're just going to use the addresses that the extension itself provide as, provides as an example to practice geocoding. These are three different addresses in three different countries, Spain, Mexico, and Argentina. If you want to geocode addresses in the United States, you would need the appropriate country code in order to do that. And you can read more about that in the textbook, but you can also geocode addresses in other countries. All right, so in order to geocode, it's very easy. You just need to select the data that's in this spreadsheet, the very first tab. Go to Extensions, Geocoding by SmartMonkey, and Geocode Details. What this does is actually create a new tab in your spreadsheet called Geocoding Details. That's different from the original tab that's empty, right? If you go to the Geocoding Details tab, you'll see each row now has a latitude, a longitude, and an address found, which is basically the address that was considered to be a match for the first column that was provided by the user. Okay? So this is very cool because you don't have to have the address 100% exactly the same as the address that's in their database in order for it to work. It just has to be, you know, very close. Once you have this additional tab called geocoding details and you see this result, you're done with the first exercise. The next exercise is to practice sorting and filtering. And for this, we're using data that actually comes from the textbook from the hands-on data viz. It comes from all of the readers of the textbook who decided to fill out a survey. And all of their survey responses were uh, saved into this spreadsheet that we now have a copy of. And so a really good way to start to explore this data is to use the sort and the filter functionality. Before we do that though, I want you to try freezing the first row. There are two ways to freeze the first row. The first is to click and drag on the little gray bar that's at the top left of your sheet and then release it below the first row. This makes it so that no matter how much I scroll, that first row is gonna stay in place. I'm going to hit Control Z or Command Z if you're on a Mac to go back so I can show you the second way to do it. And that would be to go to View, that's the menu on the top, Freeze, and then First Row. That has the exact same result. After you've frozen the first row, you can select your entire, your entire data set. You select it by clicking on the gray space that is to the left of the letter A and above the number one. This selects everything in the current sheet. Once you've done that, then we can sort. And we can sort by a particular column and then all of the data that's associated with the value of that column will sort as well. So we do this by going to the data menu and then sort range. And in this case, we wanna click on advanced range sorting options. And what I want to do is I actually want to sort by how much experience each of the survey respondents have with data visualization, which is one of the variables that you see here in the table. 
they categorized experience from a level one to a level five, I believe. So we're going to use that column to find the people with the most experience or with the least experience, depending on what we're interested in. We need to check this box that says data has had a row. And now what we can do is sort by experience with data visualization. If we select A to Z, it's going to put those respondents with the least experience at the top. If we sort Z to A, it's going to put those with the most experience at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and sort from greatest to, small, to smallest to see the ones with the most experience and click on sort. Now I can see, okay, it goes up to five. I can see that there's a respondent named Alan in Deerfield Beach who happens to have a lot of experience but isn't sure if this course is worth their time. <laughs> Pretty fun. Uh, and you can see that if you scroll further down, it, the number that corresponds to experience starts to decrease. Okay, so you can explore the data that way. Another way to explore the data for the first time is to filter the data. So we're going to go ahead and select all of the data again by clicking on the space to the left of the letter A. And then we're going to go to the data menu again and select create a filter. Each of my columns now has a little green rectangle next to it or a little green triangle that I can use to filter any of them. We're going to go ahead and filter by occupation and we are only going to check the occupations that we're interested in keeping in our spreadsheet. So first we're going to clear them all by clicking on clear. And then let's say we just want to see the educators. Well, we can click on educator to have a check mark just next to that occupation and none of the other options. Once we click OK, we'll see only educators are left in our data. And they're still sorted by those with the most experience all the way down to those with the least experience. All right. Now I want you to do something important as the last step of this exercise. First, I'd like you to create a new tab by clicking the bottom left to add a new sheet. And then I would like you to rename this sheet to sort and filter two. We need the two so that it's different from just the regular sort and filter. Then I want you to copy all of the data that is here. Again, you can select all by clicking on that top corner and then just edit copy or control C or command C if you're on a Mac. Once you've copied it all, go to sort and filter too, but don't just paste it. Instead, we're going to paste special and click on values only. This creates a brand new spreadsheet that doesn't have any sorting or filtering actively applied to it, but it's still the same result. So we don't have to worry about the sorting and the filtering messing with our data. It's just the result of what we did with no formulas attached to it. Once you have this second sheet with everything you need and the active filters and sorting on the first one, you're done with this exercise and you can move on to the formulas exercise, which actually you'll see uses the exact same data. But in this case, we want to be able to work with it without having filtered it or anything. So it's in its own sheet. Okay. So for the calculate with formulas exercise, the first thing I want you to do is freeze the first row, just like you did with the previous sheet. All right. So it stays put when you scroll. The second thing I want you to do is include a new row right below that header row. You can make it a little bigger if you want. And if you want, you can freeze that one too. Oops, it didn't let me. You can freeze this one too. There we go. In this row, that's where we're going to put the results of our formulas. Okay. So the first thing I want you to consider is let's say you're writing an article and you want to know what is the average level of experience that people who responded to this survey have with data visualization? How experienced are they as a group? Well, calculating the average is a very easy way to find that out. And Google Sheets gives you a formula to be able to calculate that. So whenever we start a formula, we're going to usually have an equal sign. Okay. So we type in the equal sign in that cell that we just freed up in the new row. Then we're going to write average, the word in all caps, 
And what Google Sheets is doing here, we can see a little orange suggestion. It is suggesting that we find the average of all of the values that are in this column. This is exactly what we wanted to do. So we can just click on this suggestion and it's going to automatically update with our average, with that number that we wanted to know. We could have also manually typed it in, right? And we don't need to know how long the column is in order to do that. We don't need to know that it's about 3000 rows. We can just put a letter E without a number after it and it will grab the whole row just the same. You need the first cell, so you'd still need to put E3, but if you put colon E as your second value, it gives us the same result. Now, interestingly, if we wanna find another average, let's say the average number of years in school that these respondents have, we don't need to go here and type equals average again, although we could if we wanted to, right? We could do the same thing and click on the suggested value. We have another option. We can click on this tiny little blue square that's in the bottom right of the cell that we just calculated and drag it over to years of school. And it's going to basically paste that same formula over here and apply it to the new column instead. This is a really nice way to quickly apply the same thing to more than one place. Just drag and drop. Okay. So for occupation, if we drag and drop, it's not gonna work. We get an error here because these aren't numbers in the occupation column. You can't take an average of words in the same way. So that's just a note, but let's say you wanna do something else with the columns of words. Let's say you wanna count how many people responded a certain way. How many people said that they were an educator, for example? Well, we can do that with a different formula. This one's called count if. And what it's going to do is only count the number of rows that match a certain criteria. In this case, we want to check the entire column. So we're going to say check column G. And our criteria is going to be in quotes because we're dealing with words here. And we're going to look for any words that are the same as educator. If we type out this formula and then press enter, what we get is 184. That means that 184 people who responded to this survey said they're an educator. Interestingly, you can apply multiple criteria to one single column or to multiple columns using a different formula, count ifs, plural this time. So let's say we wanna know who's an educator that also has more than two, more than a level two of experience with data viz. Well, the first part of our formula is gonna look the same, G3 to G, and we're gonna look for values that are the same as educator. Our second criteria, we need to also specify which column it applies to, we're gonna look at the experience column. So we're gonna type in E3 to E, that selects the entire E column. And then we're gonna say, all right, we want this to be greater than two. Also in quotes, just because of the formatting of the criteria in this formula. Close our parentheses and hit enter, gives us the result of 62. 62 people are educators with an experience level larger than two. Okay, now I want you to do one final step, which is copy each of these three values. You can use the edit copy menu or command C or control C, depending on what kind of operating system you have. And I want you to paste these over to the side somewhere outside of the columns that we're gonna be actively using. But if I just paste them plain, I'm gonna get errors like this. So this is a mistake that I just made. I did a regular paste over here. We don't want a regular paste. Just like before, we want to do paste special values only. This frees our numbers from the constraints of the formulas that we applied and keeps them off to the side so that we have what we need. And now I'm free to actually delete these original ones and it doesn't change anything. I'm actually going to remove these from here and put them a little bit lower because as you will see, we're actually gonna delete the second row now. 
so that our data is just the same as it was before with the difference of having these random numbers. Well, they're not random, but they look kind of random if we don't label them off to the side here. You can go ahead and label what they are. Average experience, average years in school, and people who are educators and have a higher than two level. Now we know what they are. Okay, the reason why I wanted you to move that off to the side is because we're gonna use this exact data for the next exercise. And in order to do that, it's gonna be for this pivot table tab, you're gonna to wanna to select all of the columns that have data that we actually need. So not these columns over here, not the usual way of clicking to the left of the A, just the columns that have the data that we want, just columns A through H, okay? And then what you're gonna do is create a pivot table. You're gonna to go to insert, pivot table, and then you're going to, instead of letting it create the pivot table in a new sheet, you're gonna click on existing sheet so that you can put it in the right spot for this exercise. And you're gonna type in single quotes, pivot table, exclamation point, and then A1. That means add a pivot table to the pivot table tab in cell A1. Then you can click on create. And now in this pivot table tab that was empty before, I can see some stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and make this bigger. I can see that we have rows, columns, and values, but it's just empty right now. That's because we're gonna use the pivot table editor to do some fun things with our data. By the way, if you ever accidentally exit out of the pivot table editor, all you need to do is click inside of the space of your pivot table again, and it'll pull it back up for you. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is add rows. We're gonna analyze those survey responses, right? So our rows that we could add might be occupation. This means that every single occupation that is uh, inside of the original data is now in its own row. And we can calculate certain things for each of those. Instead of one by one, for example, going and saying how many people said educator, how many people said government, how many people said unemployed, right? Instead of having to calculate that with a formula one by one, we can actually add volume values here. We can add values using this add button. And we would click again, occupation, to find out how many people are in each category. The automatic option that comes up called count A is exactly the option that, res that responds to our question. Count A means count all. So count all people who said educator, count all people who said government and et cetera. So this is a really easy way for us to summarize the information in our original table. We can make a pivot table that's even more complex than this. It gives us even more information if we go ahead and add columns here on the side. Let's say that I wanna see the cross section of occupations and experience with database. I wanna know which occupations have more experience. For example, I can click on the add button next to column and then select experience with data viz. And now for each level of experience, I can see how many people there are of each occupation. I'm gonna go ahead and make this bigger so that it matches. Now I can see that there are way more educators here. I'll go ahead and freeze this first column so you can see what I'm talking about. There are way more educators with an experience level of one than there are educators with an experience level of five or four in this data set, right? You can also see that in the category of greatest experience or number five, most people who said they had a lot of experience are in the information technology field. Even so, there are also more people in the information technology field in the level one column. So now you can start to really make conclusions about your data and inferences about your data. When you were just looking at the data by itself in the original table, you had no way of knowing that most of the people who our students consider themselves to be at a level one. You had no way of knowing 
that there's only one journalist or only one person who says they work in journalism who's in a level five, right? So this is a really useful way for you to get an analysis in a quick and easy format. There's one more thing you can do with pivot tables that I'm going to show you, and that's adding a filter. Let's say that you want this same analysis, but you only want it for those people who have 20 years of schooling. So remember in the original data, there was a years of school column and it goes, you know, from 15 to 20 approximately, depending on whether people just did high school or whether they did some college, right? If you only want people who did 20 or more years of schooling, you can add a filter precisely for years of school. And then instead of showing all the items, you can do the same thing you did when you filtered your table in the previous exercise. Clear all the options and then type in 20 to search for that option. Click on that number 20 and then select OK. Now all of these numbers have automatically changed and they reflect only a subsample or a subpopulation of the total. In the group of people who have 20 years or more of schooling, we can see, interestingly, there are some new patterns, right? And you can take some time to explore this and check it out and see what you can conclude from that analysis, okay? Once you have all of these rows and columns and your filter, you're done practicing the pivot table exercise. The last uh, exercise for this one is using VLOOKUP to combine two separate spreadsheets. The first spreadsheet is a list of names and organizations. The organizations are sometimes repeated and they're all food banks. The second spreadsheet is a list of food banks and their addresses. All right, so when we're matching one thing to the other, there needs to be a column that they have in common. In this case, the column that they have in common is the organization column. Both of these spreadsheets have a list of names of food banks. So we can join them together on the basis of that shared information. In order to do that, you're going to need to copy just the headings of the four columns of the addresses spreadsheet, street, city, state, and zip, and paste them over here in the first spreadsheet called match names next to organization. Now we have a space in which to fill out the information that we need. We can make this a little bigger. All right, and now we're gonna do magic with VLOOKUP, which is another formula. So I'm gonna type in an equal sign, then VLOOKUP in all caps. And inside of VLOOKUP, there's an explanation here, by the way, if you wanna read more about it. There are four options that we need to make sure to include. The search key is the first one. The search key in this case is gonna be the name of the food bank that's right next to the cell we're typing in. So I'm gonna type in B2 because that contains the name of the food bank called Central Texas Food Bank. The second option is the range of values. In this case, the range of values are currently in another sheet. They're currently in the addresses spreadsheet. So we need to go ahead and specify the name of that spreadsheet called match addresses and then a particular number of columns, in this case, columns A through E. And last, or second to last, we need an index. In this case, our index, as you can see, is the value to be returned specific to a particular column. So we need column two in this case. And finally, we need to put in, oops, finally we need to put in the word false. You don't need to worry too much about this last option because it's almost always going to be false. Okay, so it's telling me that it can't find the sheet with the name match addresses. I'm just checking to see, oh yeah, I misspelled it. Okay, I need another D here. 
if you misspell something or you try to reference a sheet that isn't there, that that's the error that you're going to get. All right, now I hit the enter key. If it lets me, let's see, enter key. And it gets me the street name of that food bank. And not only that, but it has a suggested autofill to apply the same formula to the entire column. So I could get the addresses of all of these food banks. I'm not going to accept the suggested autofill though, because I want to show you something else. Instead of just autofilling the one column, we could autofill all four of these columns and get not just the street, but also the city, the state, and the zip code by using that trick that I showed you before, holding down the little handle in the bottom right corner of the cell that we want to copy and dragging it across the space that we're interested in. In this case, all the way down to row 11. Now, if we want to do the same thing across city, state, and zip, we can do that. Just drag it across and drag it down and now you've filled in everything, not just column C. This is a really good way for you to consolidate different data into a single spreadsheet. The other spreadsheet, by the way, remains unchanged. And that's it. Those are the exercises that I want you to practice. I'm gonna ask you to do this with the data that you're using for your stories. I'm gonna ask you to analyze your own data so make sure to practice these skills so that you can use them on your own spreadsheets later.